Today we're looking at vocal mixing. We'll be working with a hip hop track, Hurt, sent in by C Note Ness Smith. Let's have a listen. I'm a heartbreaker and a troublemaker She likes to pep it up while I'm the salt shaker She a risk taker Cause she know I like to soil my royal oats Just like Mr. Quaker Great, so we have a cool hip hop track Let's start with the chorus Two basic tools I use on almost every vocal Are Fruity Limiter Not for the limiter but for its compressor section And the other is Fruity Parametric EQ the purpose today is not to tweak a vocal to perfection in front of you, because every vocal is different, and what I do precisely won't be relevant to your mix. What we will do is cover the general principles and basic tools for working a vocal. Compression. I hurt my babe, babe. The first thing I do is turn off the display input and output peaks, then tweak the compressor threshold because this initiates the display of the blue input analysis envelope. I hurt my babe, babe. This generally follows the peaks you can see in the upper half of the playlist waveform display. I'll set it to about halfway up the amplitude peaks, and then set the compression ratio to 2 to 1. You can see that in the hint bar. When you're working with vocals, ratios of around 2 to 1 are fairly transparent. That means they don't sound overly compressed. Next I restore the lost volume and increase the gain to the final level. The compression and gain increase are important since it raises the quieter sounds in the vocal without the peaks dominating the mix. This will improve the intelligibility of words. The quiet sounds are not drowned out by the music, and it helps the vocal to sit comfortably in the mix. Now on to equalisation. The reason I like Fruity Parametric EQ is you can see the frequency range of the vocal. It's always a good idea to filter out frequencies below the voice. Right click Band 1's token and select the type High Pass. You can see the slope's quite shallow, and I want a steeper cutoff. You can use the bandwidth control, or you can put your mouse over the token and roll the mouse wheel. You can also change the slope order, which affects the steepness too. Let's play the vocal and move the cutoff up to match the lower limit of the vocal. What about the other frequencies? Well, you should generally be making minor adjustments, but anything above 8 kHz will control the brightness. The 1 to 3 kHz range is critical for tone and clarity. It really is just a case of playing your track and hunting around, cutting problem frequencies and careful boosting the frequencies you want more of. Really there's nothing much wrong with this vocal, but before we move on, what about the order of EQ and compression? Well it's entirely a matter of taste. You can click on the plugin in the effects stack, hover your mouse over it and roll the wheel to move it up and down. Before I go, I'd just like to have a quick look at C-Note's mastered vocal track here. Now there's obviously some embellishments. Little things like that can really make the difference between a good and really professional sounding track. So what's C note done? I can hear three things. The first is some layered vocals, the same thing sung several times and then panned left and right around the stereo mix. I hurt my babe, to see if she'll love me again. There's delay on some words. I hurt my babe, babe, to see if she'll love me again. You can do this by adding a delay obviously to the FX stack and then automating the mute button. Just right click it and select create automation clip. 
then go through your track and decide where you want the delay to come on or off. The last thing, there's sort of a rushing sound that you can hear on the start of the vocal. That's created from a reversed reverb. To do that, load your original vocal into Edison, just right click the preview and select edit, then load another instance of Edison below that and set it to record on input. Now between these two, load your reverb. You want something with a fairly heavy reverb tail. In the first Edison, reverse the vocal and record that through the reverb into the second Edison. Now finally, reverse the vocal in the second Edison and you have your fade in sound. Uh, hurt. Uh. I hope this has given you some ideas about working with compression and EQ in vocals and some ideas for embellishments. We'd like to thank C. Nate Smith for his project. It's been fun picking through it. Until next time, enjoy compressing, EQing and embellishing your vocals. Baby.